Hi and welcome to this section of the Geometry Tutor where we're going to switch gears from area and we're going to begin to talk about volume. And uh, specifically we're going to talk about volume of rectangular prisms and also volume of pyramids. And we're going to work through all that step by step. Now the, the thing I want to tell you with my hands before I actually get on the board here is that we've talked, we've talked about area. For instance, this sheet of paper has a certain length okay, and has a certain uh, width and uh, for all practical purposes doesn't have any height at all, it's just length and width. So you can multiply those two, L times W, length times width, and you get the surface area of the sheet of paper. Okay? But in real life everything's three-dimensional and so if this were a box, so let's say it had, the, it had the, uh, the area and the shape and size of the sheet of paper, but let's just say it were actually a box, so it had a side and a top and it had sides, but it, the bottom of it looked like the sheet of paper but it had some height to it. Okay? When you take an object that has an area and you pull it and make it into a three-dimensional shape into that third dimension then it has volume. Okay? So the volume, um, conceptually what the volume is, is just like the area was talking about um, how, how um, what, what is the area of the object as far as, you know, if you shaded it, how much surface area would it, would it, uh, would it have? The volume is basically telling you an, an idea of how big it is in three-dimensional space. How much stuff can you put in it? That's what, that's what you mean when you say volume. So let's go ahead and draw some pictures and work some problems and talk about this a little more, and I think it'll be pretty clear. Okay. First, we want to define one term that we've talked about before. We're going to do it again. Prism, and we've already talked about this. It's a 3D shape. Okay, with a polygon as a base. Okay, so we, we've already talked about that, but let's just draw a rectangular prism and just show you how that satisfies this definition. Okay, here we have a rectangle, right? Has some length to it, so we're, we're drawing it in three dimensions. Length, width, and height, okay? And uh, we'll draw our hidden lines just because I think it makes the, the drawing just a little bit clearer. Okay, like that. Alrighty. So, this is a rectangular prism. We've talked about that before in the last section, and it's it satisfies this definition because it's a 3D shape, and that makes sense. It has a polygon as a base. In this case, the base of it, the polygon, is a rectangle. You can kind of think about that in terms of it being a, a box, like or like a sheet of paper that you kind of made into a three-dimensional shape. The bottom is a rectangular rectangle. So this is a uh, is a rectangular prism. Okay, we've already talked about that before. Now, let's draw a different kind of prism. Let's draw something that looks like this. Let me just draw it, and, uh, and then I will explain it. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and draw my hidden lines, because I think that makes it clearer. Hidden line back here. Okay, so this is what's called a triangular prism. All right, it's a prism because it's a three-dimensional shape, okay? Um, but it has a triangle for the base, okay? And, you, and the th third dimension, that triangle is kind of stretched out and made into a shape, so it's it's got that. Now, if you had uh, something that had like a hexagon, six-sided figure, remember, is a hexagon, right? And you could draw it like this, right? And you could also draw your hidden lines to make it clear like this, okay? Uh, this is called a hexagonal prism, okay? It's a prism because it's 